Okay, so today we're talk we're going to talk about 14 electrical units that any engineer should know. Not only electrical engineer, but uh, all other engineers. Okay, so um, the topics are that the volt, current flow, the ampere, resistance, and ohm, conductance, and Siemens, power, and the watt, a word about notation or the scientific notation, significant figures, for example. And then energy and the watt are other energy units, alternating current, and the hertz, and then rectification and pulsating direct current. Then some things you need we need to learn about staying safe. Okay, so what does electrical uh, say about safe? And then magnetism and some magnetic magnetic units. Okay, so first let's talk about the volt. So volt is the standard unit of uh, electromotive force or potential difference okay so you you see if there's uh, imbalance between two um, uh, separated conductors with charges themselves uh, present in themselves if there are imbalanced number of charges between the two then it creates a electromagnetic uh, electromotive force okay and that's the principle of uh, okay it's just like a wave Okay, that, that tidal, no, sorry, the water in the higher level and then the lower level, so they, they tend to have a force, no, or something like a potential energy in that sense. Okay, the accumulation of electrostatic charge, such an excess or short, shortage of electrons, always occurs when we have a potential difference between two points or objects. Okay, so um, if we put an electron in between the two conductors, for example, so there's an energy, no? So the energy is equal to the charge, uh, charge Q, okay? Which is one electron, uh, neg neg electron, okay? And then multiplied by the voltage between uh, point A and point B, uh, so point, uh, conductor A and conductor B, okay? Now, so so then this is an example of an electron gun okay uh, so so when electron are um they uh, sorry the electrons are um gun no to a uh, it's like a device and actually this is the um this is the idea of the cathode rays in the pre uh, in the old um uh, in the old uh, tvs uh, this is the principle that we're using uh, okay so that's the fault so we will um, explain it further here so a potential difference between two points called poles so if you have a negative and a positive so uh, produces an electric field represented by electric lines of flux okay so we have the lines of flux uh, these are just representations and it does not uh, conform to the reality and uh, what I mean by uh, it does not really the the real uh, object no? so but it represents to us the the magnitude or the intensity of the the flux okay or the electric field okay so the uh, so better understand so the if you are in inside so the more uh, the, the more intense the electric field if you are outside so lesser the intensity so it is represented by this line of flux we call such pair of electrically charged poles an electric dipole okay so you can imagine um, the north and the south pole of the earth no? so and then this is also analogous later to the magnetism no? so you have the uh, uh, the the magnetic dipole in that case no so now second we need to talk about current no? current is a flow of charge so you have the charges flowing in a conductor with a area okay the rate of flow of charge is current and ampere is that uh, is the flow of one column of charge to an area in one second okay so it's important to take note uh, one ampere is uh, equal to uh, one column of charge over one meter squared okay now what is one column one column is equivalent to one uh, 6.25 times 10 to the 8 10 electrons okay divided by one meter squared now of course we don't use this value in practical applications because it's too too big not to be used 
in practical uh, in, in in computation so instead uh, scientists they uh, make a convention of using one column no? representing 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons okay so later in uh, we will further define it as the one uh, dq over dt okay so so the current is the uh, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the flow of the charge so this one represents the flow of the of the charge okay so the rate of flow okay uh, sorry the rate of charge okay then so electrical current um, the rate uh, to which the charge flow pass a location that is the amount of charge per unit time is known as the electrical current okay now you might think uh, current is also water current no? so we uh, to, to not to be um, not to be uh, on in conflict with electrical uh, water current so electrical current so but uh, yeah so don't be confused so the current depends on the voltage applied the material to which the charges flow from the state and the state of material so basically the idea here if you have a low resistance okay so there are three examples here okay at uh, medium uh, resistance so we know resistance is uh, the property that uh, resists the flow of charges or current no? so it slows down current so at this point so for a medium resistance so at higher voltage the higher the current also okay now for the uh, high resistance so with the same amount of voltage okay with the same amount of voltage lower current okay why is that so because um you uh you uh so the current freely fl uh, uh sorry the current is blocked by the resistance so that's why um so it's only a, a little uh, amount of charges flowing through the conductor because of the high resistivity of the conductor but if it is low resistance so you notice even if a small amount of force like pushing force of the charges for them to move forward if you, you notice so there's a there's a lot of current okay okay so co compared to the high resistance okay so the so the, therefore the formula is actually very simple um the uh so the current is um uh directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to current resistance okay or it can be like this so okay so this is later uh we will call this uh, ohm's law okay so we'll talk about this in, uh, in the later topic okay so the ampere uh, current uh express expresses the rate at which charge car carriers flow past a fixed point at per unit time okay so um, yeah we know current is the rate and the standard unit of current is ampere okay and uh, which represents one column okay so that's what i uh, uh, tell you uh, one column is 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons of charge carriers flowing past a given point at every second so basically uh, i is equal to q over t or delta q over delta t okay or okay so in that sense we can uh, by unit is one ampere is equal to one charge over uh, one second okay i think i made a mistake in the previous slide sorry for that uh, um, uh, one column passing at every second one dq over d uh sorry i think i made a mistake two seconds for area actually it's not meter squared and uh, i think there's a mistake it's a one second okay so one second okay actually later we will talk about the area okay actually the area doesn't uh um so there's the area in uh really uh there's a formula for that when we talk about the resistance now in the topic uh, there will be a another class for that for the resistance wherein the area okay r is equal to rho length over area okay 
So the area greatly affects the resistance, okay? But it is not uh, the way we define the ampere. Okay, so we will talk about this in a later topic. Okay, so I made a mistake there. So one column per one second. And then, uh, okay, so that's it. Now the resistance and the ohm. So we, we already talked about the ohm as the V equals IR. So this is the famous uh, formula for uh, circuits, okay? So resistance quantifies the opposition that the circuit imposes against the flow of current or electric current. Standard unit of uh, resistance is the ohm, okay? So you can think of uh, R is equal to V over I, okay? So by manipulating this uh, ohm's law. Okay, so the unit is ohm. Okay, so, or sorry, maybe. Like, okay, so that's the unit of the resistance. And uh, or we call it the omega. Okay, when scientists cool certain metals down to temperatures near absolute zero, okay, or what we call zero Kelvin, or negative 273 degrees Celsius, the substance lose practically all the resistance uh, so that the current flow around and around for a long time. This phenomenon is what we call superconductivity. So those uh, conductor exhibiting super, uh, superconductivity we call superconductors. Okay, so scientists are in, they, this is what they so-called the holy grail. Okay. Because if we can have this kind of uh, material, then uh, then our computers, our smartphones will be more effective, no? Will be more efficient and will be even more smaller, okay? Than what we have at present. Uh, nothing can ever become an absolutely perfect conductor. But um, in theory, okay, na, uh, it's almost imp uh, it's impossible, no? To reach an absolutely perfect conductor, okay? Um, because there's always like that, no? That there's always resistance, no? There, it's Im almost impossible to uh, have resistance equals to zero, okay? So, but close to zero, yes, it's possible, okay? Now, there's, an, there's some terms we call conductance and Siemens, okay? Electricians and engineers sometimes talk about conductance, okay? What is the conductance of the material? So, it's actually the... Op uh, uh, the inverse of the resistance. So if resistance resists the flow of current, conductance is the property, okay, telling you that uh, this is the how the conductor uh, allows current to flow, okay, okay, rather, uh, so rather than resistance, okay, the standard unit of conductance is uh, variable G, so we use the variable G, but the unit is Siemens or S capital S, so and the one ohm is equal to actually 1 over okay so actually let maybe another number so let's say 10 ohms is equal to 0 0.1 Siemens okay so because this is uh, 1 over 10 uh, from this formula okay so it's just the inverse of resistance okay so Siemens is the unit and then conductance is a property of the material another way of telling uh, resistivity but it's uh, the opposite of resistivity okay and then we have the power and the watt whenever we drive an electrical current through a resistive component the temperature of that component rises okay so if you notice that one no? so your computer for example or your cell phone if you overuse it uh, or maybe you use it for a long time you notice it will uh, there's a heat no it, it, it is hot no okay we can measure that intensity of the resulting heat uh, in units called watts or symbolized by W. So I think uh, you're representing power. Okay, so power is equal to VI. So first we've learned the Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. Now we've learned this one. Second is P equals VI. Okay, take note of that. Um, so this is very important, no? Or sometimes the voltage we we use uh, in some books use volt. Uh, uh, voltage is V or E. Okay, so don't be confused with that. E is not energy in this case, no? This is voltage or we call it the electromotive force. So that's why either V or E. And uh, this one is power. So the unit is watts. Okay. Or it can be also later in AC, you will encounter 
uh, volt ampere 